short segment now, but we've got a long segment coming up with Alan Watt, uh, one of the preeminent researchers on the world state they're bringing into play and really how they're going to consolidate all these regions under, you know, one or just a few banks and, and under a global sort of system. So, Alan, I'd like to bring up how fast is this coming down? How fast is it going to be the kind of widespread depression that perception alone won't be able to mask? And what will they do with the so-called revolutionary masses, whether they've identified the right problem or not? Well, they already had their plans to deal with the, the, the revolutionary masses. They know who everyone is, and of course the Internet's fantastic for that because they put their pulse on the public all the time. Uh, that there's no privacy at all. It's all for data collection. And uh, so they'll be dealt with quite easily. Uh, they can come in and take them out very quickly, in fact, if that's, the, if that's necessary or the deemed necessary. And uh, uh, they already have internal uh, armies set up. I mean, police are not police anymore. They haven't been police for a long time. Uh, they were really military guys. Uh, most of the recruits for the last oh, 15, maybe even 20 years are from the military. And uh, they've had all the experience in rounding up people and putting them in the camps, etc. That will be done very, very quickly. We saw that done, in fact, during one of the Olympic uh, Games, I think it was, in the States. And they went out and within a couple of hours had everyone rounded up that was on a list. Hundreds and hundreds of people. So it's, it's quite easy to do that, uh, the practice for, for an awful long time. So uh, uh, they're not worried about that at all. In fact, I think they want... The, you understand that the battle is for the majority of the, what they call the silent majority in, in, the, in the general population. So there's always the bulk of the population will always go with regular media, the status quo, the, the answers are given are enough to satisfy them and make them feel comfortable and cozy. Um, uh, they, they feel they're part of something. The image is presented as their nation, their country, and all that kind of thing. So um, rioters will, pre will be presented really as the new terrorists, you see. And, uh, and that, that actually brings the silent majority closer to government for protection, and they're all for whatever measures uh, are necessary to subdue this, what appears to be riotous mobs um, in society. That's how it's going to be presented to the public. And uh, all the plans, I'm sure, have been tested and uh, put through computer simulations and God knows what else uh, for the scenarios that are coming. But 2012 is a big year. They hope to have, they actually hope to have uh, the, the, um, the, the U.S. and Latin America uh, mainly uh, amalgamated. Understand, if you watch the European Union, you can become a member, but you don't have to be totally integrated. It's a step-by-step -step process. And they hope to have at least in the first part of integration with their peace and prosperity partnerships and all the rest of it, and then peace and security partnerships, etc. They hope to have it all done by 2012. So this might just, if they're on time, they'll manage to get the riot started because of the inflation. And the people living on, the, on the, the, the fixed lower incomes are the first to really, really uh, come out and protest because they get hit first and, it's, and they can't uh, uh, compensate for it. There's no extra income. And that's happened, of course, partly in Britain too uh, already. Uh, we see that. And they'll do the same in the States. It's a massive welfare system. There's a lot of people on fixed pensions across the country, and they can't cope as the prices escalate. This is all but done by design. Yeah. Absolutely. And now now we have the NFL starting to pat down its fans. They started this at the Super Bowl, but it's a new ritual in this fascist system that to even get the bread and circus is now first you submit to the security, and, and then you get the games, Alan. Yes, and, and to be honest with you, uh, I, I personally have to bypass uh, the mentality of the people who persist and, and going through it. Uh, if you have any dignity, dignity at all, um, you wouldn't even, even have subjected to the first pat down at airport, just stop traveling, simple as that. Uh, same thing with games, etc. If you have no personal dignity, then, then go ahead and be patted down and be part of the big herd. Um, uh, uh, this is a time when you have to decide as an individual where you stand on things and how far you're, you're going to allow uh, this uh, incredible totalitarian system to go. Because believe you me, they won't stop there. They won't stop with pat down during the x rays, you're going to get body cavity searches, anything to humiliate you and teach you that you're uh, nothing. You're nothing. I agree. This is about taking our lives back. Sorry to cut you off. We're coming up on the break, Alan. We're going to have plenty more time just after this. Stay with us. 
We're just starting to get into it. I'm Aaron Dykes. Back in a moment. We're in with Alan Watt, who's done some of the deepest research I've seen on the bigger system they're bringing into place. Uh, so, Alan, we know they've set the stage for these economic riots. Obviously, all that's upon us. Uh, but the Rand Corporation also wrote mm, three years ago in 2008, lobbying the Pentagon to start a new war to save the U.S. economy. Uh, we know they've also set the stage for World War III. The whole Middle East is essentially in revolution. Uh, how are they going to transform that to achieve their larger goal, Alan? And what do you see on the on the immediate front? Well, it's so interesting, too, this strange RAND corporation that's a non-profit organization, supposedly, that every country pays millions, if not sometimes billions of dollars to for their forecast. And they're a think tank, supposedly. Uh, as part of the institution, they were on the go during the whole Cold War. They ran uh, the American society during the Cold War as part of game theory. You've probably studied that. Uh, and they used game theory that every citizen's personal profile uh, into the supercomputer in, in the Rand Corporation, and they worked the, for the entire length of the Cold War with the, the Pentagon, uh, basically dictating the, the lifestyle, the system, and the future for the whole of the U.S. So here they are at it again. They've never stopped, of course, because we're not really run by governments, you understand. We're, the government's there to, to put things into law, that's it, and pass on information to all their helpers. Um, but the Rand Corporation, all the big foundations and corporations are the parallel government that Maggie Thatcher called them, in fact, the parallel government. So did Carl Quigley. Uh, that's what they are. We're not run by democracy or even republicanism. We're run by private corporations, and we always really have been. So, um, and that, goes, that ties back in with Rockefeller with his comment on it's far preferable to have it run by bankers and intelligentsia than leaving uh, countries to their sovereign destinies, basically. So uh, we're, we're well on our way to, to this. Uh, well, getting back, though, to the TS, uh, the, the, the pat-downs at the, the arenas, you have to remember that how many things it fulfills in one go. Now, it's the only time that me, uh, men today will try and bond with their, their, their sons is taking them to a ball game. And uh, because they're not men at home, they're not men at all, in fact, today. But uh, they, they, they still have this tribal instinct in passing on knowledge to your son, and this is what it is to be a man. So come and watch these guys bash each other on the field. And then he goes home, and he, he does what everyone else tells him to do when he's at home. But anyway, the son's getting brought up now. He'll get brought up getting taught that this is, this is normal, son. You go through all this humiliation, and then you get your reward of watching the game. And so that it's, it's going to help to train the next generation. This is here forever, this system, at least, uh, for our lifetimes at least. This is here for an awful, awful long time. It's called perpetual war, constant conflict, they called it in the military magazine. And uh, this is what they, they have got planned for generations as they bring this whole world into this new order of things. Uh, and it's a completely new way of living. It's uh, a system where you can't decide anything pretty well on your own as an individual. It's a whole new set of rules and how to live by. And, um, and you're, you'll be taught eventually to serve the world state. That's to be the highest honor. They're already uh, pushing all of that across Europe big time. Uh, they call it communitarianism where the, the federal government is supposedly um, decentralizing its power down to the local level, and they already have these commissars from the private um, NGOs run by the foundations to be the leaders. And this is a new Soviet system, you understand, because this is how the Soviet system was supposed to be, uh, ruled by councils. So each little community, each trade, each factory, each organization had its, its NGO speaker, supposedly speaking on behalf of the public underneath them, or that they represented, and that's called the Soviet. And this is to be a new Soviet uh, system, uh, an advanced Soviet system for the whole planet that we're going under. But, but it, just like the Soviet system was a big con, because they say one thing and do the other, uh, bank, private banks flourished incredibly within the Soviet Union uh, for all their, their talk about uh, a central bank run by the state. Uh, the private banks could flourish as long as they did not make their money off of the profit uh, or the profit off of labor. Uh, now, lawyers can run rings around that, and, and then they did from the beginning, and the Bolsheviks right through the Soviet system, and the same thing with this system that's coming in. And those who serve the system, the higher up the level that they go, uh, the, the greater the lifestyle they will live. So reward is a big, big part of it. 
but they do want a big mass at the bottom uh, to to uh, live in poverty as we go through this, knowing we're, we're supposed to all die off according to the the military magazines, the think tanks for the military of the U.S. and for Britain. They both came out with the same basic uh, projections up to the year 2040. They've done another one up to the year 2050. And they say there's going to be a drastic decline in population across the whole world, including the West, uh, from from now basically up until 2050. So th- th- this is not meant to fool us forever. We, we're supposed to die off. Most people are not having children to start with, except immigrants. And uh, and even the immigrants, of course, adapt the lifestyle very quickly. It's very enticing to be told as a child you can do anything you want, and uh, and they go and do it, and often kill themselves in the process through disease or various other means, but this is a long-term plan to reduce the populations, and and even the world government is not the uh, end goal of it all. The, the military think tank said there will be a, a world government for a short time, and then the, the, the world will be consist of a few high-tech city-states, a few high-tech city-states, um, and countries will be gone, long forgotten, and even the regions that were under, under the United Nations will be gone as well. So we're, this is all a stepping stone to the next stepping stone to the next stepping stone uh, until they have their wonderful utopia for themselves at the top. High-tech city-states, those who survive will be um, in the science industries, basically, high-tech sciences, and uh, the rest of the old laboring classes will be unnecessary. In the meantime, China will supply the labor and the manufacturer uh, to keep essential things going until they bring it all down. So you're looking literally uh, ahead for another 40 years, uh, step by step by step. What we're going through right now is just the chaos to get us to um, amalgamate the continents completely into the regions and then to allow a brief time for the United Nations, the World Bank, to take over the Bank for International Settlements and the IMF to run the economy and distribute the wealth of the world. This, this is what they call it. It literally means rationing out food under the United Nations. They've already said this is in their charter. Eventually, the United Nations will be responsible for doling out the food to each region, and uh, it will be rationed. And if you can't, if you, you have too many people for the ration that you get, then you, you must find a way to bring down your population. That's in their charter. Yeah, 